Welcome everyone to another NASCAR Heat Evolution video. Today we're going to be looking at what happens on pit road. Now for those of you not familiar, pit road in NASCAR Heat Evolution is an automated thing, meaning that once you hit pit road, the pit road entry line, the computer takes over and drives your car down pit road, gets you into your pit box, and then leaves pit road. And then finally, once you reach pit exit, you regain control of the car to get back out onto the track. So while you're on pit road and the computer is driving for you, you see the option that is now on your screen. Uh, this is a screenshot taken from the default setup at Atlanta. So there's some things here that may look familiar to you. Some of it may look a little bit different to you. We're gonna look at each of the three sections for pitting options. Let's start with fuel tires and repair, the top option. These are fairly self-explanatory, uh, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on these. Fuel, in general, unless you're at or very close to the end of the race, you're gonna wanna go with the standard two cans of fuel. That's going to fill the car up and give you the most fuel available for the next segment of the race. Now, if there's an opportunity where you're getting down toward the end of the race and you don't have a full green flag or a full fuel stint, left in the race, you may just want to go with one can or, or whatever, but for the most part, you're going to stick with two cans of fuel. Tires, same thing here. In most cases, you're going to want to stick with four tires because that's going to give you the most grip. Now, with this particular game, NASCAR Heat Evolution, I've not seen very much of any tire wear, so you may want to experiment with taking no tires sometimes and, and see if that can help speed up your uh, your pit road time. Uh, but in general, if you're taking the full two cans of fuel, then you can change four tires during that same amount of time. So in general, just stick with the safe option, which is to go with four tires. Repair, this is something that can save you some time because if you've managed to bounce off of other players or other AI cars or the wall or whatever, and you've acquired some damage, then you might be tempted to say, yes, let's go ahead and stay in the pit box and repair that damage. Overall, I would advise against that simply because of the time that you're gonna lose. The amount of time you're gonna lose repairing damage is generally not something that you can make up with a repaired car on the track. So in general, I would leave that to off. Let's move on to the next section of car adjustments. Tape, I did an entire video about this. As far as I can tell, it does nothing to help the handling of your car, but I'm gonna approach this section in the hopes that in the future that they do something to make this actually have an effect that it should have in real life. So let's talk about it from that perspective. So you can see here, we've got 35% tape on the car right now. I have found that on a mile and a half, you can get anywhere from 45 to 55%, maybe more depending on what kind of gearing you're running. But let's look at it and say, okay, we've got 35% tape on the car. Why would you want to adjust that? Well, there are two reasons. Adding tape to the car, first of all, reduces drag, which makes you faster on the straightaway. That's not gonna be a huge amount unless you make a huge change, but it will make you a little bit faster on the straightaway. So if you need a, just that little bit extra, you can increase the tape and get that. Also, it will increase the front downforce. Now, what that's going to mean for the car is that it's going to help the car turn better. Okay, so if the car is not quite turning as well as you would like for it to in the corners, put a little extra tape on there, and that should help it out. Uh, in fact, grill tape in, in NASCAR is one of the uh, the closest things to a free lunch you get aerodynamically because it helps the drag and it helps the downforce. Generally, you can do one or the other, but not both. So tape is something that every real NASCAR team wants to put as much of it on their grill as they possibly can get by with. Now, where are your limits? Why don't you just put it to 100% and leave it there all the time? Well, you need air to flow through the radiator and the tape is covering up the radiator opening, allowing for less air to flow in. What you'll need to do to determine how much tape you can get by with is to one of the options you have during the race is to press B. And if you press it once, you'll have a readout that will come up that will show you what your engine temperature 
is actually it'll say oil temp, but in this case, we're talking about the engine. So what's the maximum you can get by with? The maximum is about 230 degrees Fahrenheit. If it gets above that, you're gonna to start to get warnings about overheating. So you can run it up to that amount, but you definitely don't wanna get over it. Okay, let's move on to wedge. Wedge, as I've alluded to in, in the setup uh, videos, is more about how quickly the car turns. If you like a car that turns very quickly, then a lower wedge number will work good for you. It makes the car more twitchy, more responsive to the steering wheel input. But if you want a car that responds slower, then you're gonna to wanna to increase that number. So what does that mean during a race? Okay, because presumably these are in-race adjustments, meaning that you've already spent a lot of time and possibly hours working on a setup and driving practice laps around the track. So you've gotten the car pretty close by the time you get to the race. So theoretically, we shouldn't be making huge adjustments during the race to our car. So when would you adjust wedge during the race? Specifically, if you're overall, the car is just a little bit too tight. It just doesn't turn that well getting into the corner and it just doesn't turn that well getting off the corner. You just need the car to turn better. Then reduce the wedge. In this case, you can see it's at 50%. Run that number down into the 40s and see what happens. The car in general will turn better. You, it'll be more uh, lively on uh, the steering input and respond much quicker. Now, let's say you get into the race and the car is just very twitchy and it's rotating so much so that you find yourself with the car getting loose in the right rear, it's really hanging out. Then you can increase this wedge number and that should slow down the transitions into and off the corner, make the car rotate a little bit less. All right, let's move on to the final section, which is tire pressures. Now, tire pressures are something that, um, again, I did an entire video of on the setup topics about this. Tire pressures in this particular game, I, I go with a, a few different ways of looking at this. Overall, let's let's start with overall. Overall, the lower the tire pressure numbers that you run, the more stable the car will feel. And that means that you, let's say you take three pounds of air out of all four tires at the same time. In general, it should make the car feel more stable. Of course, there are limits to all of this, but I find that as long as the left side tires are somewhere in the mid to upper 20s, and as long as the right side tires are somewhere in the low to mid 30s and again you've spent practice time getting the car basically dialed in to the best of your ability before the race then if you take air out of all four tires at the same time it should make the car more stable now it's also probably going to slow the car down a little bit unless you were losing time because it was unstable before on the opposite side of that, if you increase the air pressure on all four tires, it should take some stability out in exchange for speed. In general, I've seen that raising the air pressure in the tires can lead to the possibility of, of better lap times. And the reason I say possibly better lap times is because it will make the car feel different. So it's a feel that you're going to have to get used to and possibly make some other adjustments to the car around this particular feeling. So this is probably not something I'd wanna do a huge change in during a race. I might wanna go a pound or two, but probably not much more than that during a race. Now, now that we've looked at the overall, uh, how the tire pressures can work on the car, let's look at the individual corners of the car. And I use a, a very simple rule of thumb in general. If the car, if I'm having trouble with it on corner entry, I try to fix that with the front of the car. If I'm having trouble getting off the corner on corner exit, when I'm hard on the throttle, I try to fix that with the rear of the car. So let's look at the front of the car first. Let's say we're having trouble getting into the corner. The car is just tight. It just, we go into the corner and the car wants to wash up the track. The front end wants to head toward the wall. There's one of two ways we can fix that, or actually you could do both. And we're gonna stick strictly with the front end of the car. 
If the car is tight going into the corner, doesn't want to turn as well as we would like it to, then you can either increase the left front tire pressure or you can decrease the right front tire pressure. Okay, once again, let's, let's say that again. If you want the car to turn better on corner entry, you can go up on the left front tire pressure or go down on the right front tire pressure. I can tell you that whether we're talking about corner entry, middle of the corner, or corner exit, if you want to make a bigger change, then you're going to want to do that with the right side of the car. In this case, the right side tires. The reason is, on an oval, again, this is basically geared toward an oval racing. If you're on an oval, then that means you're turning left, which means that physics determines that most of the weight, most of the force on the car wants to go toward the right side of the car, the outside of the car. And that's going to be the right side tires. So if you need to make a small adjustment, then I would go for the left front. If you need to make a bigger adjustment, go to the right front. Let's move to corner exit. The same thing is going to apply here. If you want to make a bigger change, do it with the right rear. If you need to make a smaller change, do it with the left rear. So if we're on corner exit a little bit too tight, the car is just not turning as much as we would like for it to, then that means we need the car to rotate better so we can either go down on the left rear tire pressure or go up on the right rear tire pressure. Again, that's to get the car to turn better. Obviously, you would do the opposite if the car is over-rotating or getting loose and causing the back end to want to spin out on corner exit. But if we need the car to turn better, we can either go down on the left rear tire pressure or up on the right rear. Keep it in mind, as I said before, that your best option in general is to fix the front end of the car for corner entry, the rear end of the car for corner exit. And overall, if you need a bigger change in the handling of the car, do that with the right side of the car. And if you need just a smaller fine tuning adjustment, do that with the left side of the car. Hopefully this has been helpful. And thank you for the suggestion on in the comment section of the videos. And hopefully you've uh, found this video helpful and stay tuned for more NASCAR Heat Evolution.